grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. We are living in sacred mysteries that is called to mind our sin. Lord Jesus, victor over death, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, giver of life, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, coming in glory, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your faithful, O Lord, to welcome worldly the Paschal mystery and proclaim the praises of your salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me, Ezekiel, back to the entrance of the temple of the Lord, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the facade of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing east where I saw water trickling from the right side. Then when he had walked off to the east with a measuring cord in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and had me wade through the water, which was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand and once more had me wade through the water, which was now knee deep. He measured off another thousand and once more having wade through the water, which was now in deep. Again he measured off a thousand and had me wade, the water was up to my waist. Once more he measured off a thousand, but there was now a river through which I could not wade, for the water had risen so high it had become a river that could not be crossed except by swimming. He asked me, have you seen this, son of man? Then he brought me to the bank of the river, where he had me sit. Along the bank of the river, I saw very many trees on both sides. He said to me, the water flows into the eastern district, down upon the Ar Arabah, and empties into the sea, the salt waters, which makes it fresh. Wherever the river flows, Every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live. And there shall be abundant fish, for wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food, and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to St. John. There was a feast to the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem at the Sheep Gate a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda with five porticos. In these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I'm on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat and walk. And immediately the man who came well took up his mat and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, It's the Sabbath. It's not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who's the man who told you, Take it up and walk? The man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you're well. Do not sin anymore, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Therefore, the Jews began to persecute Jesus, because he did this on a Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I guess one of the small benefits of this uh, video reception of the Holy Mass is that I don't have to invite you to be seated because the assumption is you already are. Uh, and I hope you're comfortable, but not too comfortable. Uh, I don't expect to talk a long time, but if I don't talk well, I would hope that you don't succumb to slumber. I'm looking at water in these two readings. Water has a, a very profound significance in that part of the world. Although Israel is not quite the desert we sometimes imagine it to be, through most of the region, water is a precious element. Galilee, from which Jesus comes to us, is actually fairly verdant, particularly the Sea of Galilee. But in the south, uh, below Jerusalem, it can be quite arid. Therefore, water is always closely associated with life and therefore associated with hope. Hope, where there's water, there's life, where there's life, there's hope. We have this image of the, of the uh, temple as being the source of this enormous amount of water from the north, south, east, and west, beginning with the trickle and then becoming this enormous expanse of deep water, so deep Ezekiel says he could only continue by swimming. I have had the pleasure of traveling to all kinds of parts of the world mostly because I am a priest, and therefore most places I go, I can usually find a free place to stay. Uh, in 2008, I had the pleasure of being in, in uh, Nairobi, stayed at the National Seminary, St. Thomas Aquinas Seminary, as we have it, and met a young man there, who I'm embarrassed to say his name has uh, slipped from my mind, but we continued a discourse through the wonders of the internet, and we started swapping little uh, wisdom sayings. I, I love those, and, and we all have them in our culture, don't we? Uh, the Lord helps the man who helps himself, and Benjamin Franklin, huh? 
Early to bed, early to rise, makes the man healthy, wealthy, and wise. But the book of Proverbs offers us no small number. Uh, working as I have here with the people of Mexico, they have their own supply. Más vale lo malo conocido que lo bueno por conocer. Better the known evil than the unknown good, we say it in English. But the boy from Kenya offered me one. He came from, I want to say, we've two tribes that have almost the same name, the Luyu and the Lua. Both of them are from the area around Lake Victoria. Uh, therefore, uh, fishing is an important part of their culture. He had a, a wisdom story, he said that the fish finds it difficult to be conscious of water because, of course, the fish is immersed in it all the time. And he said, so are we. We find it difficult to be conscious of God because we're immersed in Him all the time. When I first came to Thomas Aquinas now, uh, it'll be six years ago in July, one of the things I said to the congregation then, and unfortunately it's become true, was that I knew that in a fairly short period of time, I would become so accustomed to particularly the, the beautiful music of this congregation that I would begin to take it for granted. It isn't that the parishes I served before did poorly, they were just much smaller, with therefore smaller resources to devote. But here, it's been marvelous, marvelous. But let's come back to our friends from Lake Victoria. How hard it is to be conscious of this God in whom we find ourselves immersed. That's one of the problems that Jesus encounters at this pool of Bethesda. A beautiful name, Bethesda means the, the home of hope of hope. Uh, these people are waiting. They, they had a, a folk belief. This was a, an intermittent spring, uh, sort of an uh, Israeli version of a geyser, except not such a mighty flow and not hot. But the water would stir when the, when the water surged into the pool. And the belief was that if you got down into the water, First, that you would receive the blessing that you hoped for from this pool, a little bit of folk religion more than it is Judeo-Christian. Uh, he finds his healing not from the mysterious action of that intermittent spring, but from the divine word. Here we're hearkening back, of course, this is from John. And John's Gospel begins, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so, Jesus speaks the Word, and the man is able to take up his mat and walk. The Pharisees, just like you and I, uh, because they don't like Jesus, they find a little petty detail with which to damn him. He did this on the Sabbath, completely overlooking the blessing that that action had been to the man. Typically, the kind of work that was done on the Sabbath wasn't to give God glory. It was rather just to enrich oneself. Ignoring the time that one was expected to spend and recalling the good things God had done for them, people were wont to spend their time in making sure that they would have good things by working more and making more money. Jesus made no money. He in no way enriched himself, but he very much enriched the life of this man. So here we are to celebrate these sacred mysteries, hoping that this encounter with our Lord, whom we find it difficult of whom to be aware, that this encounter with the Lord will enrich us, open our eyes, open our hearts, and make us grateful for the blessings we've received.
Let's turn to our loving Father confidently. We'll hear and answer the prayers which we offer in Christ's name. Let's pray for the men and women throughout the world dedicating themselves to both the care of the sick and to the search for a cure to this dreaded virus that's afflicting us so badly. Then Almighty God will inspire them, grant them the wisdom that they need, and grant them rest when they can find it. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray for our loved ones who are far away. Don't we always miss them the most when something difficult is about? That Almighty God will keep them safe, bless them with His gracious love. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray for those who are close to us, who we know have been at least at risk, if not infected by this virus that our good God and His graciousness might find a way to spare them the ravages of this disease. We pray to the Lord. In a moment of silence, let us all offer our particular prayers to our God. Almighty God, our Father, through the ages, you have protected your people from terrible illness. You used illness to soften Pharaoh's heart, to allow the people of Israel to pass. You sent your angel to guard over them when the angel of death slew the firstborn. You kept them safe as they walked dry shot through the Red Sea. You gave them water from the rock manna and quail to feed them on their journey. Even when they were belligerent and ungrateful, you watched over your people. Lord God, watch over us now, who live so much in fear, that by your grace we might have the peace that is ours in Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Gifts which you yourself have bestowed 
and they attest in your care as creator, to your care as creator for this, our mortal life, and effect in us the healing that brings us immortality. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Archbishop, Joel and Bernard as auxiliaries, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, of the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Is offered to each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have this peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have done but only the sin of the world and my soul. Your words as it can be. 
We are people, your are